How's everyone doing? Right, let me see what we got here. Okay. One sec. And we're live. Good evening. Okay. Let me just sort this out. <clears throat> How's the chat looking? What are we saying? <sighs> Popping off. Um, so, welcome back. After um, last time, I thought I would do something a bit more mellow. I think we could all do with a sigh, a long sigh of collective relief. And I'm going to do some ambient music. I guess it's going to be a bit like um, the Dead Screen Scrolls vibe. Um, <clears throat> I'll kind of show you what my technique was for that. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's all just take a moment and go. Okay, so. I am going to start with using like a automatic chord generator thing. This one I like, there's a few of them, but this one's good. Um, obviously you don't have to do this kind of thing, but in the past I'd always just do my own thing, but like this speeds things up. You get surprising results that you weren't expecting, you know, randomness. And also, like, compared to last week, which was a very much like a, um, a vertical way of composing, I guess this is going to... I'm going to go the complete opposite direction. I want this to be very horizontal. Like, the end game is the movement through time. It's not about the stacking, necessarily. Thirsty boy tonight. Like the default piano sound on this thing's really nice actually. I never use it, but it's a good starting point. So yeah, I've just plucked out a bunch of pleasant sounding things as a starting point. Um, and then I guess I'll just move some things around for, to personal taste. And I kind of hear this start in a more of an obvious minor. Um, and also what I'm doing is it's just forming like some harmonic ideas. Um, this will all be replaced with something else in a minute, but it's a good starting point. Thank you. 
Um, so yeah, like I was saying, I'm going to try and keep very much focused on how this moves across like three or four minutes and get moving in that direction quickly. So I've just duplicated this and I'm going to create a bit of a, um, just a development. It'll be quite subtle. Like I'll slow this tempo like way down in a minute so these the progression moves really slowly. Um, so this second variation, I just want one like nice change that can just sort of um, will just throw you off. It's subtle, but it works. Also worth noting that there's absolutely no method to this. I'm purely just moving things around till it sounds like I wanted to. And no no theory involved here whatsoever. Mm, putting in some signature clarity, um suspended tension there. Yeah, I cannot cope today with doing something manic. Just like my head is swimming. I think it's um yeah, a good time to do something relaxing. <laughs> That's nice, but that's not going to work there, I don't think. That's the um, radio head called, um Motion picture soundtrack. There's a big chord at the end, which is sort of my favourite thing ever. And I think I've just stolen that, but... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll save that for the next bit. Brain's not working today. Bear with. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, sometimes if I just can't find what I'm looking for with like a, a next chord in the sequence, it's easier just to duplicate and do a slight variety of. Um, I'm not doing this for any reason other than to give something back to the world and entertain you in answer to the chat question there. I think it's quite good doing this stuff like and demonstrating some methods in front of people kind of affirms um, my thoughts about how I work. Uh, like this, for example, was a technique that I was doing um, maybe like a year and a half ago now or something. Um, and yet you'll see what I mean by technique in a minute. This is just like laying a couple of foundations. But um, yeah, I think you don't really get perspective on what you're doing until you do it in front of someone else. Same with like when you're playing music back to people and that. Also, a lot of the, especially when I'm making music for myself, a lot of the best stuff tends to come from um, just experimenting like this, not having any real purpose. I think if you set out to do something too specific, it never works. head path this actually isn't it another song it's reminded me of So what I'm doing is just mapping out, like keeping an eye on that end game, mapping out, uh, I'll go for about three minutes-ish, arrangement where the, the first chord progression is going to be the main thing, and then slight variations will come in here and there, and then there'll be a final variation that's quite different to sort of wrap things up on. Just colour coding those bits for my reference. And I've left a wrong note in there. Yep, there he is. Uh, my favourite Radiohead album would be OK Computer or Kid A. They were very influential on me as a boy. Apologies, actually, if this mic is, is um, a bit too ASMR. I had it set up for, like, been mega noisy with the last week's thing and now it's very uh very mouth sounds isn't it so just enjoy that this is yeah ambient music like best cheat <laughs> put this on your master crank it up and then just from this point on Literally everything I throw into this session is going to sound beautiful.
I mean, you can do this with any reverb as well, but this, um, uh, it's got that high, like, shimmer effect on this. Well, I guess it's like putting in an octave above and just on the reverb. Yeah, if you liked that ambient collection I released last year, you're you're gonna have a great time for the next hour. Cause it'll probably sound exactly like that because I clearly haven't really moved on with my uh, ambient methods, which is fine. I would usually change the sort of bass sound of that piano, but actually, very nice. It's gonna like crunch it a bit here, bring out some of those highs. See, like every now and again, you just get those little choice chords. I think you have to watch out for when you just throw in reverb over like the master is it can all get a bit congested in the sort of lower end. So that's why I'm just filtering some of that out. We don't need it. Yeah, I do fully intend to do more um, ambient stuff just out of pure self-indulgent. Like it's, I find it really relaxing doing this. You don't have to ever stop like the process as well, you just especially using live, it's really good at just like letting things loop around and you just get a bit lost in it. But yeah, this isn't what I'm kind of showing you is a very easy method that anyone could do really. Even if you have no intention of releasing it, it's quite nice to do. Um, although I will have to just stop this for a sec because I'm going to slow it down. I think in ambient music I quite like their feeling like there is a sort of background pulse because I suppose that becomes like the human breath. Um, I like it to feel like it's drawing in and out a bit but it should be quite subtle. I don't want it to feel like there's a beat coming in at any point. But yeah, it's nice to get a little bit of a subliminal pulse going. So that's why I've like kept the chord progression very, um, yeah, dumb and like evenly spaced. Is that a nice chord at the end there? Save it right till there. Keep organized. Um, I'm just going to try some different sounds on this main progression. Usually I'd probably just change that the original sound, but I'm keeping that because it sounds nice. So I'm going to have something in parallel that might come in and out. A lot of the time, oops, excuse me. Yeah, um, whenever I load Serum when I'm doing this stuff, the CPU goes crazy, so we'll see what happens here. Can't cope with streaming and being a absolute 
boss of a sim. Yeah, here we go. Just got to find something with a few less layers going on. Just when everything starts, like, stacking up. Um, uh, I managed to, like, crash it or something. Let's abandon that. That's going to be a nightmare. I'll go. To, I'll, right, I'll go pick one of my like things that I've made that ages ago that I use for a lot of things. Um, this is just like a twinkly sort of arpeggiator that I'll just throw down as a texture. Doesn't usually sound quite as like. Dreamy as that, but so sort of, yeah, it's that reverb on the master channel. Just everything's going into a a galaxy far, far away. A nice thing about like just put doing that rough like long form arrangement early on is I can draw in like long sweeps of automation so things can just evolve really slowly. So what I'm doing now is just stuff that you won't really notice but just help it evolve like the attack time on the sample, the twinkly samples is slower at the start and then get a bit more percussive as it goes on. in the old chat. I like anything one a tricks point never does. Actually, here's a good example of um, the sort of horizontal mindset of composition. Never too much going on at once. Which at times I'm the complete opposite of, but it is worth having it as an option in your, um, I don't know, creative outlook or whatever. Um, so what, what I'm going to do now is, um, now I've got that like base of like beautiful watery sound. The case is to put in. Uh, these little little things that poke out like these little spikes of um don't know how to describe it little glints I guess or something little lens flares So I'm just going to go through the whole arrangement and just have these little bits that poke out. Sometimes they don't, they don't have to be in tune. Like giving it, having something that's a little bit off is something I quite like in this ambient stuff where it just feels slightly haunted at times. It's because, you know, the anxiety never, never truly goes away, does it?
Um, I was getting some echoes happening on these little vocal things because you can very easily just put a little bit of a modulated wobble. Made it feel like it's disappearing through the sands of time. I guess I'll have it so it um, gets higher as it goes on as well. And with enough space between these um, things that poke out, will you won't really notice it rising. That's something I do like with a lot of things. I sometimes will have a whole song subliminally um, transpose itself up like a tone. So it's getting more exciting without you realising it. I'm not doing that here, but there's some, you know, some food for thought. I suppose I'm, I'm seeing this in like um, sort of tears of um, how busy uh, the different parts are. Like those first things, they're going to be there the whole time. That's like the backbone of it. Then this would be like this next tier down where these are going to happen quite a lot. Like enough that they form kind of the char part of the character of the composition or whatever. But um, and then as it goes down, there'll be just like some things that maybe just literally happen once. But, you know, there'll be just little flares. Um, what are we saying? Yeah, Cancer in the Water does that. That whole thing transposes up. Um, the idea that you don't notice it until it loops back round. Um, so, um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do like when I start getting the hang of all this a bit more, I'll do some like proper like requests or whatever. Go a bit deeper in technique if that's what people want to see. But I thought maybe for the time being, I'll just sort of do an, an overview, fly on the wall type stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll look back over these um, comments later, so if you do want to put any suggestions for the sort of thing that you'd like me to do, then I'll definitely make a note. Yeah, vocal tracking would be easy because I pretty much just have one Ableton rack that I made a while ago that I just throw on everything and it you know, just sounds good every time but I can break down like what's actually in that I guess. Just opening the 
release on these choir noises because they're a bit too dis um, sort of staccato to start with. Yeah, they ring out a bit more now. Yeah, I figured like sometimes it's more useful just to watch someone work how they usually work than have like than be watching or listening or whatever learning the same tutorials that everyone else is about fundamentals like all that stuff is there in abundance on YouTube so I think it might be more interesting to see how someone applies technique and like there's probably a lot happening at once maybe but um Yeah, that's what I think I would have found most useful when I was trying to learn stuff. Um, uh, the, the one thing that this plugin is useful for, like, I sort of lost track of like if I kind of ended up in a different key to what I started with, and I you can rather than me sitting here and working that out, I, it will just tell me if I just play the notes in. kind of funny because I think it started with all these nice like jazzy chords and now they're just really dumb ones so we do crazy D major but yeah an E minor um, useful to just know for the sake of like I'll probably be putting like auto tune on things in a bit and all that and what am I? I'm f uh, freezing some of this stuff so it doesn't take up as much processing power because I just know that it's going to start choking if I don't do this. Check the chat. Not much happening. Uh, what are we saying? Fold and final chorus synth players. Um, yeah, that's a busy one, that song. Um, everything on ThinkPiece is probably using like Juno emulator sounds, most of that. Um, or some wave station, like for the more twinkly stuff. But I'll kind of stop using those things because we have to move forward. I think that the, the Juno, um, what's it called, um, TAL60, TAL, I don't know, 60 is, um, I think there's a free version of that, I used that for years and years. I mean, any of the Ableton stock stuff's pretty good as well. I'm just going to put some subby stuff in for the clubs. So I'm just taking the uh, the the main chord progression and just being super dumb, and we're just leaving the lowest notes, and that is going to be the bass. Here it is. Fuck yeah. If you're uh, listening to this on a phone, you probably can't hear this. 
Bear with me. Um, uh, this, in this case I'm using distortion to sort of make the bass feel like it's deliberately rattling, sort of breaking your speakers a little bit. little crescendo right at the end. Just trying to work out how heavy handed I can be with this because it probably won't cut through all the other layers anyway but I just want something rattling down at the bottom. Yeah there's probably some uh, some hurts tones in there that are going to heal your chakras and all that, so you're welcome. Usually I have a bunch of stuff like set up on buses that are um, just going to make the mix like just slamming loud um, and I, I guess that is not really necessary for this so kind of just checking there that I'm not being too heavy handed with this. We don't really need to compress anything too much with this. Although saying that I do quite like an overall compression with this sort of thing so it does um, just turn it into like a, a dense sort of sheet of sound that I can then automate later in the overall volume. Yeah, that um, camel fat plugin is actually a bit of a, a bit difficult to get hold of, isn't it? Because they don't actually make well, sort of abandoned it. I can't remember. It's on it's it's on the internet somewhere. Just go online. Just get onto Google. Um, I'm just tidying things up a bit here. Generally, if I don't like need things as MIDI, if I'm happy with how they sound, I'll just commit to it and um, bounce it to audio. I feel like this bass is a little bit out of control actually. Um, and also, you don't necessarily have to have the reverb mix like 100%. Sometimes it's worked for me in the past just backing it off a little bit so the odd bit of um, detail creeps through. Uh, but in this case, I don't think it really needs it.
Yeah, um, uh, writing lyrics is like torturous for me and I hate it. I hate the process. I like the end result if I'm happy with it, but I hate doing it so much. So, that, um, yeah, that'd be quite a lot to go into if I'm trying to do this at the same time. Although, I will say, I think if lyric writing isn't painful, you're probably doing it wrong. So I try and remind myself of that. It's meant to be, it's meant to be difficult. When you're laying your soul bare. For the mass consumption of strangers on the internet I kind of forget I'm meant to be talking about what I'm doing. Um, what all that it was there? I was automating some uh, volume, like tremolo, volume wobble, or yeah, on the bass so that it just feels like it's pulsing a bit, and then the pulse, the speed of that pulse, was getting more intense as it goes on. Um, so this would be sort of the next phase of just finding totally random stuff and just throwing it in and being like, was that add something? See if we can. Whoops. Just get that like someone's fallen down the well kind of vibe. I think with lyrics and um, topics, if that's not coming to you, it is better just to write total nonsense, complete shit, get the melody good, and things will just start forming over time. You could you could be singing like I just about how much you love your baby, and that's fine. But then somewhere down the line, you might change that to maybe, and then it sounds really sort of intellectual. And there you go, you, you'll piece it together later. So you just got, it's just having a starting point. Um, what the, what's the longest time I've spent on a track when um, it depends if you mean my own things or when I'm working with other people because 
when there's lots of other opinions flying around, things can take ages to get across the line. Like when I'm working by myself, it can be pretty quick, but... Um, let's think what was most laborious of my own things. Um, I don't know, they probably all level out about the same. Uh, the, the basic idea for something will happen in a day, a few hours probably, and then I'll come back to it a couple of days later, chip away at it. It's always the vocal stuff that slows it all down. The, the music for something will be done in like a day or two, like on a per track kind of basis. I'll tell you what was, what was quite time consuming and annoying was what I was doing on Think Piece where I was, I'd written loads of songs and then I was trying to make like a sort of cut out like um, mashup of all those different songs and making that work like that, um, the, the same um, track on Think Piece that has um, Naysayer, God Slayer and I can't remember myself now, that, that was that was difficult. That, that's like when a conceptual idea, you know, something seems like a great idea at the time, and then you actually start doing it, and it was it was pretty annoying. <coughs> Obviously worth it though. It changed the face of hey. modern music as we know it. So here we are. I don't know what I'm actually looking for here, but I'll, I'll know it when I find it. I kind of want something to use as a intro type thing. Reverse that, and it... Oof. Bit hot and heavy. We do like it though. Um, I am using that um, as a like, sidechain compression for those main chords so that the, the chords will duck behind that effect. I um I really like the idea of everyone using splice sounds at the minute. I think there's something quite cool about everyone taking sounds from the same pool of options, and it every it can all come out sounding completely different. But like, I would quite I quite like the idea of hearing the same sound in a hundred different songs. It's like some weird like collective conscience. Not everyone's different interpretation of it. Because like all this stuff, like I could just use my own sounds, and like I used to be really into that, like recording my own drum kits and spending ages on that. But and it's fine, like whatever journey you're on. But 
right now it's more about the the ideas and speed what I can do with a sound I think it's it's opened up like more niche um, avenues of creativity as well. Like you, you could be a music producer and just solely focus on sound design at the minute, um, and that be really useful for the sort of producer community. And I do a bit of that, but like when it when it comes down to actually getting stuff done like this, just make it as easy as you can for yourself. If you're going to sit there and work on a kick drum for five hours, like you're not really getting anything done, are you? Like, unless that's you know what your aim was. Um, I'm going to try and um, just introduce something like a, a more typical arpeggiated synth line. It'll still be buried because of that, like reverb on the master, but um, I think a little echo of something a bit more generic might be nice. Like a, I'm using a, a guitar sort of plucky sound. I think just having like an echo of a real instrument will it creates like a ontology like strange nostalgia feel on quite a subliminal level. But stylistically I definitely it's something that really interests me, um just sort of digging at people's need for nostalgia sneaking it in there making people like something and they don't really know why like just because there's like one thing that sounded like a I don't know 1980s Madonna track or something not the best example but yeah. Some weird settings that I put in on this. Um, I kind of want it to uh, bend a bit more, make it a bit sort of bendier, but I don't know if that's probably not really going to work. Um, Mario 64 sounds in Law of Fives. Um, there's nothing sampled, it wasn't intentional, but I was, uh, around that time, I was using a lot of um, uh, general MIDI. Um, so it's like the stock MIDI that will be on your computer already. Um, so I suppose they are sort of in, those sounds are embedded in all of our collective conscience of, uh, conscious of, uh, I don't know, because they're used so much in, like, 
really basic adverts, um, you know, sound effects and... I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just like cheap synth sounds. Yeah, I, I've kind of abandoned that a bit more now. Yeah, I guess it's because they would have been the similar sort of sounds that were um, built into the uh, the N64, PlayStation, all that kind of thing. They're quite similar. Yeah, that sound in Adam and the Evil is um, is from some kind of stock library that it's te it's in a few things. But that's part that kind of when I start getting into the idea of like I don't really care if it exists in a bunch of other stuff because that'll just be like strangely triggering for people. Um, it just messes with people's heads a bit. Like I've heard that somewhere before. I don't know where. I'm all for that. But yeah, it wasn't like a sort of, you know, like a sample that needed to be cleared, like it wasn't actually in any specific game exclusively or anything. It's just everyone, especially like game designers, end up pulling from the same like sample libraries and that. Beautiful. Thank you, Dylan Matthews. Matthew, singular. One Matthew. It's even in the same key. There's no such thing as coincidences. saying that I don't know why I can't actually hear Dylan Matthew, what have I done? Uh, I've got some weird rooting going on here. Hang on. Um. Awkward. Dylan Matthews has fucked me, poisoned my session. I can see he's there, but he's not there. Let's pull him out of the get get Dylan Matthews out of there. Let's put him in his own his whole whole new thing. Let's, let's abandon that. There you go. Get your own channel, your own special group. Yeah. There he is. Voice of an angel. There's your hook, guys. Straight to the radio.
And you can't really beat the human voice for like emotional response. And Dylan knows this. And that's why he's probably a lot more successful than me. a bit. Dylan stumbled upon one of my weird um, chord changes there, isn't he? Anyone asleep in the chat? I knew it. Yeah, we're ascending. We're ascending today. Is, that, is Dylan Matthews like a, a real thing that people know about? I don't... Or is he just like a splice thing? I mean, obviously he's the man. That Dylan Matthews type beat. See who else wants to come to the party. Who else wants to feature on my track? <laughs> Only for the UK hardcore ravers. drama in here at the start.
Right, right finally I can put a fat, fat beat on it. Here we go. Let's just ruin, ruin all our hard, transcendent work. I mean, I jest, but I I do like the idea of there being a sort of um, like these little like again. I mean, that's basically you know this isn't nostalgia; it's a modern thing. But like the idea of having some trap hi hat just poke out somewhere just around the peripherals adds make adds some confusion in a cool way. I think and it's not like in time or anything. I suppose there's no um, high trebly stuff in this really, or not nothing that has any transience to it. So use that as a little um, plot moving device here. wasn't actually that critical, that was it. My extensive leads collection. I think what I'm thinking here is a little bit of that like Blade Runner, Vangelis kind of thing. A little synth brassy thing popping out. Cyberpunk's so hot right now. Rogue, isn't it? Um, same key, I think, would be a good idea. So, with anything ambient like this, it's worth like having things just um, sweeping around the stereo field. Especially like if you're gonna listen to something on headphones, like this should sound quite like wide and like things are rotating around you. I'm quite into that spinning. Yeah, that's the word I want. Yeah, that kind of works. Just having another little character come in that moves it along. 
It's always interesting when you get um, super lost in doing something like this and then, you know, it, it gets, I'm sure it's almost kind of boring to watch this, um, but you come back to it the next day and it's, yeah, it, it, it'll sound completely different. And like all this tiny little, the, the little bits of detail are worth it in the long run. See if Dylan Matthews has got anything else for us. He really killed it in the verse. Just squeeze in between Dylan and also Dylan. He's more than a man. It's, a, it's an idea. Steady on. A distant dream or a nightmare fading. It's gonna be okay. Gotta let those ghosts disappear because you don't need them anymore. They do not define who you are. You need to find yourself. You're gonna make it through the rain hey. I'm usually a bit reluctant about using, um, this goes against what I was saying earlier actually, but like the cashmere stuff is um, on the splice is really good, all of it, but I feel like yeah, literally everyone's had a, has a, had a go on some of that. But when it's covered in reverb, who's gonna know? Sing it. There 
get some of that in there. Um, uh, a, a vocal run like this is quite useful for just stretching out, like just pulling it apart with the warping in Ableton. Show you. Why is it done all of those? I don't want it all. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, so um, stretching it out like this, and then you're going to get. I don't know, all these weird little like melodic artifacts, and especially if you go and throw an auto tune on it afterwards. Get all sorts of weird little bends and runs. Not necessarily the best example when it's inside of this sort of ambient situation, but that as a technique, I get quite good results from certainly like for building weird textures and stuff. I do it anyway, like um, uh, E minor, isn't it? And then. So, yeah, well, she's just off on a completely different thing now, and it's beautiful to hear. Yeah, she's picking up the slack there, where Dylan Matthews is kind of just sitting back and just going like, "Take this one, it's cool." I'll come back in for the middle eight. Here he is. I bet Dylan Matthews is a considerate lover. Listens to your needs. I'm not just talking about sex and just emotional support. An emotional, intelligent man, I would imagine. What I'm going to get into here is um, some overall sort of group automation. Um, the habit, it, obviously, it's all quite like flatlined at the minute. Like it's just this huge, like uh, wall of heaven. But if you go in at a, on a sort of group level, like I'm just doing all the like mid rangey key stuff here, and I just like filter out some bits so we can give it some like a bit of bit more structure. So this is gonna let's filter out a bit of the top end. So it feels like it's fading away and then back. Dylan's back. I like the idea of it feeling like this is going to be a slow sort of meditation of breathing in and out so it's gonna it's gonna fall away again. Radiohead 
we have left this realm of existence. No more tears, girl. Don't cry for me. Um, yeah, this is kind of sounding exactly like something off that ambient album now, for better or worse. I think that was kind of the point, so that's good, I think. And also hopefully a demonstration that that kind of thing isn't difficult. I'm not saying it was or is uh, perceived as difficult, but it's it's just quite fun to like paint with musically with quite broad strokes across like a three or four minute arrangement where you're not lost in drum beats and drops and how hard the bass is hitting and all that, and you just approach it from a totally different angle. And you just have to sort of feel the flow of it a bit more. The Juno thing I was talking about earlier, since it's on our minds. And I'm just going to have that kind of pulsing. And that kind of like fizzy feeling, serotonin rush. <laughs> the I'm not going to get out of bed kind of because I'm having a nice time type beat Um, do I ever have an interest in going analog? Yes and no. I I have had more uh, gear and hardware and things in the past, but I deliberately decided to just make things as portable and um, easy to move around and travel with as possible. So, and I like the idea that everything has to be an idea. I'm not reliant on any particular pieces of gear. I'm probably like reliant on particular plugins and that, but you know, it all exists in the same place and I can take it with me. Um, I don't have anything against analog stuff. It's just not part of my workflow at the minute. If I wanted to change that up, change up the, you'll get different results from using hardware. Not, you know, not any better or worse. It's just like, it will change your workflow. I think, in terms of sonics, I can make anything sound analogue if I want to. Um, but it's just the approach, how it will make you work. I, I did all the um, drums on No Now were done on an MPC, for example, and that's why it's a lot more wonky, quantize off, um, more school of J. Diller kind of thing. Um, whereas now, and deliberately, like everything's a lot more on the grid that I do. And then I'll just have the odd thing that just is uh, wonky and falls off, like, say, in Vapid Fills, you've got the really rigid sort of trappy almost sort of beat, and then it slips into the wonky triplet thing and things like that. I'm more into, like, hard contrast at the minute. Actually, I don't know what I'm into at the minute. Whatever I'm told to do. Okay, so I've got that like fading off into the distance and then it's going to fade back as a finale piece.
It sort of feels like it's got three different um, phases to it now that feels quite good to me. This is pretty much finished as far as I'm concerned. We're just messing about now. But, um, joke, all jokes aside, uh, Dylan Matthews' hook there is quite, um, it is really important. Like, I always like in these ambient things to have one echo of a, like a distant, um, shrouded hook that's like, it's a bit like, um, you know, the burial approach where you've just got these distant, like, R&B hooks and... Um, yeah, it's a distant memory of a pop song kind of thing. It gives your ear something to latch onto as well, though. favourite burial one was um, Archangel I think might have been a different one yeah. something off that album yeah. sure how sort of like loud this is going to be overall is it when you haven't got drums it's weird because like you've got no reference point for how much you're pushing your um master sort of limiters and compressors and things like that um i think this is probably okay um i'm now i'm just automating some overall um little volume dips What's my favourite meal? Finally, the questions that we actually want to know. Um, oh, it's mud. Mud is my favourite meal. Seven feet tall, yeah. We'll stay consistent with the clarity uh, more, haven't we? So I talk to you from my home studio in Fiji.
like trying to make a bit more of having these swells, just volume swells that make it feel like it's a bit more of a dropping over the edge of a waterfall kind of thing. I don't think I want it to finish on that part. I'm just ducking that out a bit earlier. There you go. We have left Earth. Probably about time to just listen through that. There you go. Um, uh, any questions before I leave? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, I am working on an album which is in three parts. Um, 
which is why it's taking longer than I thought it would do. But it's getting there. Um, the first part of it is like still on a medieval Europe kind of thing, but it's not. Uh, that the, the overall thing is not. Um. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try at least to do these streams every week. So I just want to um get a bit more into the habit of doing this kind of thing. So uh, new year, new me. Just trying to force myself to do it. Um. So I suppose next time I'll I'll do something different stylistically. So feel free to like request things. Um. Mm -mm -mm. So, yeah, I'd release my my idea is to release three parts of a album in different sections at different times, but it'll all work together as one big thing by the end of it. Um, yeah, vocal mixing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe I'll just do that at like this, the start or end of um, a session because it's not going to be that interesting to um, anyone that's maybe not a, a music producer type. But um, I guess that's that's mainly who's going to turn up for this anyway, isn't it? Um, yeah, all right. Uh, same time next week then, yeah, lads? All right, take it easy.